Good morning. Ooh, I like this. I don't, well, I think Frank's a good introduction because what Frank talked about it is what we as a company and we as an industry kind of face. And a lot of that's perception. What's going on out there? What are homeowners doing? And part of our, our mission and environmental stewardship group at Scott's is to go out and work with all kinds of external stakeholders because over the years, there's been really a dearth of information out there that's easily available for people to know what homeowners are really doing. And so people make guesses, people make assumptions, people make all kinds of interesting conclusions based on virtually nothing. And we as an industry are probably very culpable for not providing a lot of this information simply because we always thought it was secret. But the funny thing was, we report tonnage tax, we report pesticide sales, we report virtually everything, plus there's enough marketing studies out there, if you've got three or four hundred thousand dollars, you can find out anything about anybody. So it's not a secret, it's just maybe not accessible. So this morning what I'd like to do is talk about some of our information, try to put it into context, and talk about how it relates to a number of the issues we're dealing with, particularly water quality. First off, and probably most important, is an area that we as the agricultural community never really talk about, and that's human behavior. Homeowners behave like humans, behave like consumers. They do not behave like professional nutrient managers, professional agricultural managers. And so what you find is that their behavior, based on like 40 years of scientific studies at Scott's looking at marketing uh, activities, Homeowners behave like they do with any other consumer good. So when somebody recommends you change your oil every 3,000 miles, how many people in this room do that? Oh, cool, we have a whole really compliant group here, Rich. Well, we have sort of the same thing with fertilizing home lots. All of us over the years have made a lot of recommendations on how to do it. It's interesting the participation levels, and we'll show that in a minute. But whether it's flossing your teeth, anything that somebody recommends as a standard activity, homeowners have a certain level of participation, and it's very much a bell-shaped curve on how close do they get. And it comes back to something Frank said in his talk, and that's quality of life. We all have a quality of life that we like to pursue. Homeowners absolutely do. And so their participation depends on what they think they get out of it and how satisfied it makes them. The other thing we're going to talk about a little bit this morning in the time we have is trying to put the use of these products in context with what else is going out, uh, on out there in the environment. One of the first things we started when, with the Environmental Stewardship Group was trying to benchmark some numbers because, again, when we go out and talk to external stakeholders, it's interesting you ask them, well, how much fertilizer do you think the homeowners put out? And we hear all kinds of numbers. It was almost bizarre, the kinds of numbers that you hear. Same thing with pesticides. This uh, information on fertilizers is from the Fertilizer Institute. If you want to know the most current numbers, you can go into their website at TFI and get all these, not only for the US, but for the world. And uh, the interesting part is the US total uses about 58 million tons of fertilizer a year, total. Homeowners, do-it-yourself homeowners, use about 1 million tons, or about 2%, less than 2% of the total usage in the U.S. Again, context. Same thing we did with pesticide use, because that comes up all the time, too, is homeowners are nuking the world. Ask, you know, how much are they using? They're using more than everybody. Well, if you go back into U.S. EPA reports and some of the reporting that they have, 1.2 million pounds of active ingredients sold annually. Homeowners, again, based on our market size and purchases, use about 40 million, about three, less than 3% of the total that's being used in the US. Interesting thing is, when you look at this context, homeowners use as many pounds of pesticides on their dogs and cats for flea and tick control as they put on their lawn and garden as many pounds go on flea and tick as go on the uh, guard. And there's a little bit of a gap in here between the total. One of the interesting things we never talk about in context is the fact that 600 million pounds a year of chlorine is used to treat water in the US. 
as a pesticide so that we don't live in a third world condition. And so we always have a hysteria about pesticides, but yet we're using them on a regular basis to make sure that the quality of life that we're leading is what we expect. So let's talk about homeowners a little bit. You can benchmark the numbers and you see some variations around depending on who reports it. About 80 million homes in the U.S., about 30 million acres is a number that seems to be pretty consistent. What is shocking is when we tell people, based on all the market studies we've done at Scott's and other folks have done, like National Guardian Association, half of our homeowners don't fertilize their lawn in any one given year. And we've had three independent marketing studies that have shown the same result. So not everybody, every homeowner, uh, is putting down fertilizer. In fact, this information seems to be very true state by state, and only it begins to disintegrate when you get into very tightly controlled neighborhoods that you might say participation may be a little bit different. But about uh, 30 million folks are do it themselves, and about 10 million or about 20% of the home lawns are using a lawn service. What's probably the most interesting about this from our perspective is the perception of how many applications the average homeowner is applying. And again, this is based on hard market data, bags sold in the industry. The average number of applications is somewhere less than two, 1.6, 1.7 applications per year. The three or four apps, Frank's guy laying on the bench trying to recover doing four apps, is probably Scott's greatest marketing success. We have convinced everybody in the world that everybody's putting down four apps. Uh, unfortunately, nobody listens to Scott's, despite that fact. And the number of applications are incredibly low that are going after that intensity. It is not a regular thing. So this participation is a key thing. And when we ask homeowners in different types of marketing studies the number of apps they're doing per year and why they do it, we consistently hear the same message over and over again. I apply the amount of fertilizer I need to get the lawn to look acceptable so that I'm not any better than my neighbor or no worse. But they, rarely do we ever find anybody that really aspires to having a high intensity lawn that are doing it themselves. If they choose that, more often than not, they will move to a lawn service company to provide the intensity of care that they are looking for. So when you start then to take a look at this data and say how does it relate to what we're trying to do when we're trying to look at environmental impact, you can start looking again at the total number of applications being made by homeowners that are doing one app per year or two apps per year. You can start to see that these numbers are uh, relatively high compared to the number of participants uh, doing three or four apps. Translating this, however, to, uh, whoops, got too many clicks here, uh, to nitrogen application, it, it becomes pretty interesting. Uh, the people putting down one app per year put down about 144 million pounds of nitrogen. The folks that are putting down 160 million pounds with two applications per year and we, we get into these discussions about controlling the number of applications to control the amount of nitrogen. And in fact, these folks put down very little percentage-wise compared to the people putting down one or two apps. A little bit of a context, and we'll get into this a little bit later on what this really means. What's interesting, though, again, if you look at the loads that are being put, applied, uh, with this kind of behavior, the normal application delivery rate is between 8 tenths and 1.8 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square foot per year. That is the average do-it-yourself load that's going down. Likewise, phosphorus, which we hear all kinds of discussions about uh, overdoing it and uh, excessive applications, 0 0.8 to 1.8 pounds of PTO5 per year. Well, these numbers are actually extremely low as far as what the average homeowner is doing. And part of that is due to the products that are being sold to the homeowner. Another thing uh, that we get into is, of course, what's being used and sold as a perception of how you control it. This is Triad data from the Triad Marketing Group. This is one of those reports that will cost you $300,000. Uh, we liberated this one chart and made it obtuse enough so that they didn't know we were 